A couple years ago, I tested the original Akasa Torin fanless case for Intel's 8th generation NUC. The Torin FX is the second iteration of the Torin case for Intel's 10th generation NUC. The first Torin case was a far superior CPU cooler than the tiny heatsink and fan included in the stock NUC case. At 30 watts, the Torin case brought stress temperatures from 82 degrees Celsius with the stock case down to 60 degrees with the Torin case. The Torin FX is nearly identical to the original Torin, measuring 9.8 by 4.5 by 3.8 inches, and it can be placed horizontally or vertically. Akasa's specifications for the case includes a maximum TDP support of 25 watts. This matches the i7-10710U's upper TDP of 25 watts. The power limit can be modified in BIOS, however, to above 25 watts, and I will touch on that later. The Torin FX includes an M.2 SSD heatsink and a SATA adapter cable. One downside of the Torin case is that it does not allow for the use of the NUX SD card slot, and it does not include Wi-Fi antennas. The case is available for about $165. The system I will be building here includes the Intel i7-10710U CPU, which is part of the NUC 10 i7-FNH kit, 32GB of 2400MHz SODIMM memory from Kingston, a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe drive, and two Wi-Fi antennas with IPEX MHF4 connectors. You can skip the next six and a half minutes if you want to get right to the test results and conclusions.
To test the performance of the system, I ran Passmark's performance test. The 6-core, 12-thread, 10th generation Intel i7 received a score of 12667, which is significantly higher than average for this CPU. It earned 3 out of 5 stars. The integrated graphics predictably did not do very well, with 1.5 stars for 2D and 3D graphics. The 2400 MHz memory received 3.5 stars, and the Samsung 970 EVO Plus drive received 4.5 stars. Next, I wanted to test CPU temperatures. Before this test, I went into BIOS to set the package power limit 1 to a reasonable 30 watts. I then ran Prime95's small FFT's torture test for half an hour, and used hardware info to track temperature and power use. After the half hour was up, the CPU's maximum average core temperature was about 64 degrees Celsius. The ambient room temperature at this time was about 17 degrees. This was a good result and comparable to the original Touring case. I then increased the power limit to 45 watts to see if I could get some more performance out of the CPU. Unfortunately, the NUC motherboard's voltage regulator began thermally throttling very quickly when stressed at 45 watts. I decided to add some small heat sinks to the VR components that I could identify. I then re-ran the test, and the throttling was delayed by about 5 minutes, but it still did throttle. The 30 watt test did not cause any VR throttling, so I would recommend sticking to 30 watts or less. The weak power delivery components on the Intel NUC is one of its drawbacks. It really is a mobile platform, designed to be as small as possible. If you are willing to accept a slightly larger case with a mini ITX motherboard, you can get a lot more performance for about the same price of the NUC. That said, if the aesthetics and size of the Torian FX case, or the power efficiency and connectivity of the NUC appeal to you, it's certainly not a bad option. Visit my recently created Fully Silent PC's Patreon page for details of this build, and every other one of my builds. My hope is that it will become a repository for a wide variety of fanless computers, with performance and thermal figures for each of them. 
like this video, and subscribe for more fanless PC content. And visit FullySilentPCs.com if you are interested in purchasing your own pre-built fanless PC.